Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja and in this segment today we are going to discuss what is the significance of the discovery of fossilized footprints of dinosaurs in China. Now this topic is important from the perspective of your preliminary examination. The prelims perspective can of course be related to facts and from the perspective of GS mains paper 1 this will be of significance. Let us move on and talk about the various topics that we are going to discover under this. So these are the many topics that we are going to discover and uh, of course we have to understand that we have to uh, analyze the entire segment from the perspective of both factual and conceptual. Conceptual in the sense the pange that is important for you to understand the theory of continental drift that was given by Alfred Wegener will also be related to it. I will tell you how. So dinosaur footprints in China, the discovery and its importance. Let us talk about this. If we talk about this, then before discussing the discovery, we have to know about whom are we talking about. So we are talking about dinosaurs and their, their origin can be traced back to uh, 240 million to 230 million years ago. Okay, and their appearance for the first time ever was done in the Triassic period and that belongs to the Mesozoic era and that is of course related to 1.9 uh, million to 201.3 million years ago when uh, the entire earth was divided into Pange and Panthalasa. Pange is basically, you see that it is the theory when earth was a supercontinent, right? Everything, every landmass that was there that was connected and it was like a one earth that means pange means pan that means all uh, and gay means earth okay so after alfred wegener gave the theory of continental drift this was the entire picture that came into being and that started in the triassic period their emergence but after they started disappearing nearly the cretaceous period the earth also started the pange started to get discordant and move away from each other and then after we saw that happened in the Cretaceous era that of course entails that where, wherever the continents are right now that was the similar circumstances was there in the Cretaceous period. From the perspective of concept if you want to ask me then continental drift theory if uh, we see it from that perspective the fossils of getting dinosaurs you know uh, the fossils that we discover in the continents which are not connected right now they are divided by oceans this can be very important for you to uh, you know cite whenever you are going to write your mains exam so wo who are dinosaurs they belong to the archosaurs archosaurs is a clade or uh, a, a, a clade you can say they trace their origin from a common ancestor and that is different group of animals and of course this also pertains to crocodilians, pterosaurus, dinosaurs and even birds, okay? And the archosaurs emerged after the end of the premier extinction that is 252 million years ago. So these are all, uh, you can say, the facts that we have to understand. So you see, archosaur, archosauria was then divided into many things. You see, then we have aphanosauria and of course the pterosauria then we have larger pitidae and psilosauria as well as we from the same ancestor we get our dinosauria so archosauria is divided into that many parts and you can see by the shapes they're very different moving on if we talk about the kind of blood that they had it they were likely warm-blooded when you are warm-blooded you can you know be alert and work 24 into Seven. You do not need to hibernate much. Moving on, to know more about the ancestors of dinosaur and the predecessors of dinosaur and successors of dinosaur, you wouldn't believe that of course we are talking about those dinosaurs which were non-avian. That means they do not belong to the category of birds and they disappeared. If we talk about the avian part, right now we have the smallest dinosaur, the hummingbird, bee hummingbird. So this is the smallest dinosaur that we have. The largest dinosaur was the Titanosaurus. These are of course herbivores. Okay. Moving on, you see, now we talk about Argentinosaurus. This has been the largest ever discovered fossil of any dinosaur, non-avian dinosaur. And let's talk about the discovery, what has happened in China. So 4,300 dinosaur footprints have been 
discovered where in the Hebei province of Zhangjiakou in northern China. And why is it important? Because according to the South China Morning Post, it is the largest number of footprint fossil found in one spot in the country. And they belong to Jurassic and Cretaceous ages. And they are, dis they are discovered in the sense that four different species have been found. And it is being said that one species among these four were never undiscovered. So a new discovery can also uh, come out from this. They belong to both herbivorous and carnivorous type and the availability of water and trees at that time might have you know enjoyed the presence of dinosaur in this area and the discovery although was made in 2020 but because the scientists were mainly focused upon getting 3d print of those footprints and getting a mold out of it that is why it took two years now to ensure that yes these were footprints of dinosaurs now if we talk about preserved footprints they are fossilized that means they are preserved in the sense they can you know take us back to that time whenever the footprints were made these preserved footprints are known as ignites and the, these are the trace fossils that have survived millions of years now they are of course made up of earth material which had a quality that it was soft enough for the footprint to get impressed upon and then hard enough to retain that footprint not very watery and earthen material of course is very important over here then the material dried over a period of time hardened and was covered with layers of sediment and then fossils can be seen many places because of soil erosion we are discovering footprints that is also one of the causes then moving on if we talk about why why are footprints important because they tell us about the activity of the animal and the type of dinosaur that lived in the eco original ecosystem how did they live as well as other animals like lizards and insects if they are also if they also evolved at the same time with them that has been also discovered through that behavior of the track maker track maker is the animal that is making the track okay so behavior what was the behavior if too much anxiety was there if shorter you know if we see shorter footprints shorter as in the distance between the two footprints is not very spacious then the person uh, sorry then the you know dinosaur is running and if the larger spaces are there then the dinosaur is walking so the amount and frequency of that could also show us the behavior and the gait and the speed gait and the speed might not be up, uh, exactly the same but yes a little can be known about the dinosaur whenever we see the footprints about what was the speed what could be the speed not what was and also if it was a bipedal or quadrupedal dinosaur that means if it walked on two feet or four feet okay respectively so these are the certain things that can be known now if we talk about the history of fossil of uh, the discovery of fossils of dinosaurs let's go back to 1677 when robert plot he made the discovery of the first dinosaur bone now he did not think that it is a dinosaur bone he thought it is a giant human bone but uh, we understand from that megalosaurus is believed to be the first dinosaur ever to be discovered and william buckland was the first professor of geology in oxford university and he ensured that the bone that he discovered is dinosaur's bone that means he saw the bone and he ensured that it is you know this discovery was registered as a bone of a dinosaur not no, nothing else then in 1820s in cheshire england uh, earliest fossils were found over there and the earliest written record of fossil footprints was the ichnogenes shirotherium and the clade dinosaur or the term dinosaur actually means terrible lizard in greek okay in greek it is known as terrible lizard so it was given only in the year 1842 by the English paleontologist Richard Owen. Okay, so you will see how we walked through 1677 to 1842. So bones were discovered even before we knew that it is a dinosaur. It was supposed to be a certain animal, so giant. Moving on, let's talk about uh, another very important point. In 2017, world's longest dinosaur track, track, not the dinosaur, world's longest dinosaur track was seen in France and it measured more than 150 meters. So it showed us that the track maker was 35 meters long and weighed about 35 tons. This was the 
this discovery was very significant in terms of that only. So, if we talk about India, India, the first dinosaur bone was found in Asia was ever in India. And this was done by Major General William Henry Sleeman. Sleeman is the same person who is related with suppression of Thagi, right, in the time of Governor General William Bentick, okay. And he did so in the year 1828 in Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. So, in 1842, Richard Owen gave the terminology dinosaur and we see that uh, in 1828 only before, you know, much before that, Henry Sleeman discovered the dinosaur bone. Moving on, you see, this is the Titanosaurus indicus, the fossil of which was discovered in Jabalpur by Sleeman. Moving on, and if we talk about other places in India, then you see dinosaur remains have been found in Rajasthan, Gujarat, MP, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. So these are the many areas, these are the regions where we see the remains of dinosaurs. Until now, these areas have been discovered. Moving on, now another very important dinosaur which had a horn on its nose and that is the Rajasaurus. Okay, so Rajasaurus was uh, discovered in the year 2003. Another very important discovery and this was an ambush predator. What is an ambush predator? That means it used to be a carnivorous dinosaur and it used to uh, ambush the other dinosaurs in the sense uh, appear suddenly without any warning. So that is also one very important point of this. Then the largest species to be, the largest dinosaur, not the species, the largest dinosaur to be discovered in India is the Barapasaurus tegore. Okay, remember that. And the most ferocious one is of course the most storied dinosaur of Jurassic Park that is the T-Rex. T-Rex has also been found in India. Let's talk about the question, pre-based question, who was the Governor General of India when the first dinosaur fossil was discovered in India? Lord William Bentick, Lord Canick, Wellesley or Lord Dalhousie? And uh, for those who have answered the last question, kindly stay with me so that I can announce your names and those who have it, you can answer this question and we will take your names in the next segment upcoming segment okay so yesterday i asked a question that was related to the health the segment was health challenges of the scheduled tribes so yes many people have answered it correctly the correct answer was madhya pradesh and we see that uh, puja gupta shubham praveen samina chitra and kulbi thakur Janvi has answered it correctly. Aditi has done the same. Anu Singh Cho Anuj Singh Chauhan. Then Neeta Sharma has answered it correctly. Uh, the survivor has answered it correctly. Hema Swati and Raghav. It's actually C. Okay, Madhya Pradesh is the correct answer. Sidhu Royal King has answered it correctly. Suguna Mikli has answered it correctly. Pallavi Jangir. Then we have Sudarshan, Anurag, Arti. And uh, Akriti has answered it correctly. Guru Prasad has answered it correctly. There is just a letter K. K has answered it correctly. Then uh, Sanjeevan has answered it correctly. Sanjana has answered it correctly. Bharat. Then um, Priyanshu has answered it correctly. Alok has answered it correctly. Megha has done the same. Then uh, Amrita has answered it correctly. Unknown 2.0 has answered it correctly. Sumit has answered it correctly. Okay, so there are certain questions as well. Um, yes, uh, Pooja Rathod has asked, ma'am, do we have to remember the and quote the exact data in the answer? See, yes, it's true that it's not humanely possible to remember everything, right? But certain data, if you present, just write approximately. Never go for exactly, exactly 9%, exactly 9.6%. You can go with approximately. Approximately will do. But do try to remember certain important data. Important data is important for our examination. So whenever you are going to write approximately, and even if you're close with that, that will help you a lot. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching.